Ahmed Salahijo joins us now. He's the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Rural Electrification Agency to tell us about the rural electrification plan and program that the federal government is supposed to begin this month. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, all of that conversation about the electrification, rural electrification, by the way, has been on for a while, and we know it's part of the ESP that the government put out. Now, so far, we are told that the program should begin in this month. Is it still beginning, and where? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, yeah, so it should. Uh, the program has actually uh, uh, been launched already, and uh, we have been receiving uh, applications on this uh, uh, particular uh, part of the program. So uh, yes, it will begin uh, this month uh, uh, by the grace of God, and we're looking uh, at uh, in the next uh, week or so. Uh, once we have uh, some disbursements from the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, some of those applications have actually been uh, submitted uh, to the Central Bank and they are currently being uh, reviewed. Uh, so uh, before, uh, within this month, we should have some disbursements and there on, uh, we'll be able to deploy uh, uh, some uh, solar home systems uh, within uh, this particular program. But of course, uh, we have been doing this uh, at the REA uh, with other programs uh, that uh, at the end of the day would also all contribute uh, towards having uh, uh, these 5 million connections or even more. Very quick uh, one that you will help us to clear. Uh, when you say the dis disbursements from the CBN, the understanding that we have about the launch is that the products, the solar systems have been produced and the, dis the, the deployment of those solar panels and to the families would begin this month. So you're saying that we are beginning from scratch, that the equipment have not been produced? No, 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 no. You know, uh, the, uh, the federal government uh, typically made this uh, uh, funding available within the uh, uh, central bank. So uh, within the process, it has to go to a private sector developer. So this is not uh, something government uh, is doing by itself. So uh, for those, uh, so with the developer, uh, most likely what you find is that uh, they do have some of these uh, equipment already, as you rightly mentioned, on ground. So once that uh, disbursements are happening, it means they are moving and deploying uh, uh, this infrastructure. So the infrastructure will be going from the warehouses or the producers, the private sector, to the, your agency before it goes to the families that have been selected or what no 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 it goes straight to uh, uh to it goes straight to the sites so what essentially what, what happens is that uh, we are going to guide the private sector in terms of understanding the unserved and underserved areas within the country so during this application process they have uh, been submitting uh, areas where uh, certainly we uh, are off grid so what that means is that by the time uh, the disbursements happen, they would have already uh, agreed on where uh, those products are going to go to uh, within the rural areas. How many of the 774 local government uh, areas in Nigeria are underserved that this intervention of the government will be serving? Uh, well, you know, uh, uh, thank you very much for that. So the issue is that uh, if you look at the country as a whole, uh, what you find is that uh, countrywide data is available where uh, we, we have launched a, a platform uh, just last week at the uh, Federal Ministry of Power where we look at data around unserved and underserved areas within the whole country. And uh, some of these areas are not even local governments. What you find is that they are even smaller communities of uh, settlements of maybe uh, a few uh, hundreds of people, you know. So depending on uh, where the area is and how uh, sparsely uh, 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 populated that area is, then that is when you now decide which sort of technology to deploy. So this, uh, 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 this particular uh, issue now is that uh, you would have to take uh, the solar home systems to areas where you, know, uh, you have a smaller population, then you take the mini grids to areas where you have a larger population of uh, 200, 250 households. So uh, it's very difficult for me to uh, tell you exactly uh, 
uh, how many communities those will be because uh, uh, overall you have, uh, I mean, over uh, 80 million Nigerians that do not have power. But to help answer your question, uh, uh, that data is going to be able to guide uh, these private sector developers to areas where certainly uh, there is no electricity or there is no grid power. So in simple terms, the government, the federal government is looking at providing solar energy to those areas that are underserved or off grid. And I mean, this has been a long time coming, as, as my colleague has said, but help Nigerians understand because Yes, it might have been a long time coming, but we're going full throttle, as it might seem right now. So how much of a game changer is this? Yes, we know what we get from the Jenkos, the Trancos, and the Discos, but this is different, right? So how much of a game changer is this initiative? Uh, I think uh, I think it's going to be uh, very very impactful because uh, one, the uh, uh, this technology is uh, much easier uh, to deploy. Two is safe energy. Three is reliable. Is clean. Uh, so what you find is that uh, uh, because uh, you know areas that are off grid are also uh, areas where you know uh, it's uh, it's difficult for them to uh, uh, to connect to the grid uh, uh, immediately because you find out that uh, you know uh, those areas would have grid power not too far away. But uh, if you begin to uh, try to uh, extend uh, the grid to those particular areas, you find that, that some of them are a bit too far. So, for instance, you know, uh, some will be 20, 25 kilometers away from the grid. And the capital uh, you, uh, you need to spend to extend that grid uh, to get it to, uh, uh, to those communities uh, uh, would cost a lot of money. So given that uh, cash outlay that you put down, you know, uh, sometimes it makes more economic sense uh, to be able to deploy uh, these off-grid solutions within the communities and they would be able to serve those communities and uh, uh, be able to disperse the, the power within those particular areas. Uh, and the technology has evolved now in such a way that uh, anytime the grid has been improved and the grid gets to that community, what you find is that you, ha you can integrate uh, the two technologies and you can uh, begin to have uh, clusters of power around uh, around the country serving particular uh, uh, local areas. So I think uh, it's very, very impactful and it's technology that is, uh, has certainly evolved uh, to, this, uh, to this level where we can uh, rely on it to provide power for, uh, for, our, for our rural dwellers. This is an elaborate document on, I mean, what participants need both at the upstream and downstream, how the central bank will come in to play a huge role in this. But for the consumers, which is like you and I, or maybe more of I than you, for the consumers, uh, so let's try to break it down. How much power, how much kilowatt hour would they be getting per day and at what cost? Because you say that this is more efficient, it costs less. So how much power and at what cost? to the consumer, that is. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. So, uh, typically, uh, what you find is that uh, uh, this, this would definitely vary uh, based on the usage of the power. You know, so uh, sometimes, you know, uh, for instance, like the last uh, commissioning we went to uh, uh, in Ogun State, uh, what, what you find is that uh, the, the, uh, the capacity of the plant that we put out there was about uh, 100 kilowatt. So you, you see that uh, based on the household and based on what they, are, what they are using, but if you think of a typical household, uh, what you find is that they use uh, uh, their consumption is, is, is actually very low because uh, in the rural areas, you know, uh, once you can charge your phone uh, and you have a few uh, uh, light, uh, light bulbs, even though I noticed in some of the communities now there has been a, a rapid involvement of uh, antennas, which means that uh, uh, rural dwellers are going to buy TVs now that they have uh, the required electricity. Uh, so to help answer your question, uh, uh, you know, you're talking about about few kilo, uh, uh, kilowatts uh, uh, per day that they, that they consume. Uh, and when it comes to the tariff that they charge, it also uh, uh, certainly varies. But then uh, before you actually uh, uh, get um, uh, pre-qualified for the program, uh, uh, the REA uh, looks at uh, the, some of the business plans that have been submitted just to ensure that, uh, uh, you know, the uh, um, 
the submission uh, the private developer has made uh, is a viable submission and uh, at the end of the day uh, obviously if we uh, uh, feel the tariff that they are charging uh, is, is a bit too high uh, is something that uh, uh, we would advise that they, they, they come down on and also uh, some of the things we've noticed uh, some of the developers do it nowadays is they charge you as you consume. So if your consumption is low, it means that you do not pay uh, as much uh, as you would if you, you, you are, you are, you are uh, consuming the power uh, uh, more than that. So if, if you have well, low consumption, uh, right. chances are that you pay uh, uh, much lower. Okay. Well, you have to tell us now uh, how much that much lower is. But one other question that you talked about the other time where you mentioned uh, that uh, you've done some mapping, uh, you've identified the communities. Uh, and if, if it is going to be difficult for you to say, okay, this is the number of local governments, definitely you should be able to tell us at least what's the average number of communities. According to the Economic Sustainability Plan, where this program is coming from, you, the, this program is supposed to be done in consultation with state governments. How many state governments have you spoken with? How many communities have been mentioned to you by each of the state governments? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult uh, for me to answer that because uh, they are, you know, the number that you should be working on, to be very honest, is uh, uh, 80 million uh, Nigerians or more do not have power. And uh, this program looks to uh, uh, take power or make uh, 5 million uh, connections to uh, uh, 25 million Nigerians. So uh, at the moment, uh, some of the work that you're asking for uh, is still uh, work that uh, we are uh, currently processing, you know. So I'm not able to give you an exact number of all the communities in Nigeria currently that do not have power. Uh, because uh, even from the data that we have uh, yeah. been able to have now, just, just a moment. It's uh, cut across about uh, uh, yeah. 22 states. Okay, 22 states. In this first phase, how many communities are going to benefit yes. from the first phase? Okay, I don't have uh, I don't have those numbers right away with me, uh, but I will make it available once I get them. So just as we wind down, because it's quite important, there are figures fly flying around. People will pay four thousand naira monthly uh, to get access to solar power, two thousand naira. Just how much is too much, and how low is okay? <laughs> I guess uh, that is a. Uh, that is relative, right? Uh, because uh, uh, to be honest, uh, if you look at what we pay these days, uh, by the time you put together uh, you know, the money you pay for the uh, generator, uh, the money you pay for your diesel, uh, some, of, some of us uh, maybe even put uh, inverters at home, uh, you find out that you pay a lot for power. But of course, in the rural areas, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's about affordability. You know, so from what we have seen so far, you know, um, uh, we do appreciate that uh, the rural uh, communities and the rural dwellers are in a position to pay uh, because uh, some of these communities have not been able to have uh, power for the last uh, 100, 200 years. Uh, so they do appreciate uh, uh, bringing in power. The reason why it's, it's hard to pinpoint uh, well, exactly... Uh, my apologies, is Mr. Salahidjo. Just, just a you know? moment. My apologies. Yes. We, we, we have to go. But just give us a figure. Like how much, on the average, will each household <laughs> be paying? Okay, I think the figure he has uh, uh, of about the 4,000 uh, is, is, is accurate. Okay. Well, we have to thank you very much, uh, Ahmed Salahijo, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Rural Electrification Agency. Thanks for your time, and we hope to have you again to expand this conversation. Thank you. Well, back in a moment. Do stay with us.